Hello everyone and welcome back. We have made it all the way. Our journey has been complete. G2A.com sponsoring the Summit to America and we're on the last day. It's going to be the losers finals and then we will move on to the grand finals here. But first up at bat, it's going to be complexity from now in the lower bracket brought down yesterday of course from not today and they're going to be playing Leviathan. So we've come a full circle here. Leviathan have taken out Complexity during the group stages, and then they met at the beginning of the playoffs. Complexity did best them, and now another rivalry in the making here. It's going to be odds of, what is it, 60% for Complexity, 40% for Leviathan. Merlini, how you feeling, man? Do you agree Pretty with good. those odds? Uh, it's yeah, Leviathan, well, you mentioned full circle. There is one person, unfortunately, left out, or one team, which is Navi US. And yeah. they should have beaten Leviathan. They should have been beating them easily 2-0. So um, I have to root for, or I have to think Complexity is the pretty significant um, You're not going to uh, powerhouse be the yeah, Admiral 1 be like, I'm going to root now for Navi US's, uh, the, the, the guy who beat Navi US. No. So that way Navi US looked that much better. I mean, I like Leviathan and all, Yeah, but they, I know what to expect from them. And it's just like Navi sucked. It was just really wild. <laughs> Leviathan won. Oh my god. Dude, did you see the, you saw the game? It was... It it was, was if you were an obvious fan, it was pretty heartbreaking. I mean, not gonna lie. It was very heartbreaking. You know, oh my goodness. It was, a, it was a bit of a hot mess from both teams at times. I was a Navi US fan. I know you were. I know you were. And I'm sure a lot of people out there were, but we've got to move on. We've I know. got to move past we that point. We're now getting to the bitter end here. The winner of this series is going to be moving on to play Not Today in the Grand Final. That winner going to be joining us here at the house. Okay, without further ado, let's go ahead and let's not deny the online audience uh, any much more. We got the draft well underway here. Uh, the first pick was awarded to Complexity. They won the coin toss. Yeah, and uh, how we're going to be doing this best of three series is next game we'll be uh, swapping the first pick inside. And then third game, if there is a third game, of course, we will be reflipping that dang coin and getting underway. So with Complexity's first pick, they get Ancient Apparition, a support that many teams have been grabbing up first and foremost. I looked at them as more of a sustained counter and maybe someone who has a nice niche with like Faceless Void, but I'm seeing teams prioritize Ten them early. Remaining. Maybe they like the early clashes. I know a team like Leviathan, they love to do five their five-man hit squad remaining. right off the bat. And there was even one game in their series not yesterday, but the time. day before, where they had picked something like a Sand King, let's say, and their opponent would do the jungle invade, because, you know, you got to prevent Sand King from getting a full jungle to work with. And Leviathan would just do Leviathan things. They rolled as a five-man unit up to the other side, and they lost their whole jungle. They just got invaded, and they just took all the camps Doing away from Leviathan Sand King, things. and they just could not recover. So I know what you mean by what to expect from Leviathan. For a while there, they were a group that thought outside the box. They were rambunctious kids picking up their, their dang Jenkins Pudge and, and Axe Radiant maybe from time to time. Pick. And it was catching teams off guard, but I think slowly teams are understanding the way of Leviathan, the, the more popular they get. So with that said, Ancient Apparition, Batrider picked up here from Complexity, Leviathan. They get Ogre, Jakiro, Legion Commander. Pretty vanilla, Mer Merlini. Pretty vanilla. Especially with the Pudge band out. I think... Um yeah, it is pretty vanilla. Brewmaster, I think it has to be a ban versus Leviathan, too. Ten um, they just play very well around the hero, so I don't expect Brew to get through any of the games. I think part of the reason also Five why Complexity picked remaining. AA is because they got wrecked by it yesterday. They got 2-0 by not today. Both games, Ancient time. Apparition in the mix, and they're very good about or at least not today was very good about coordinating the burst with ancient apparition and mm -hmm. just like a lot of unexpected damage you can tell that they were just completely caught off guard a lot of the time by how much damage came in let's say less than a second with wrath of nature ancient apparition and one other nuke and people would just drop and they'd be like what happened to me that global though i love that the global. global ability right there it might be something that complexity looked to enhance themselves here i mean it's just when you see an AA picked up this early and you're not countering something I think they just got like a nice weapon on their hands and they want to take full uh, utilization of it. So without being uh, Faceless Void not being there, surprisingly Skywrath Mage has been ignored thus far. 
So I wouldn't be surprised if Complexity considers something like that. Z-Freak is probably one of the biggest Skywrath Mage advocates in the, in the game, but as I finish that thought, there's your... Skywrath would have been good. Grab. It's good with Batrider, it's good with AA, it's good against Legion Commander. I think it would have been a pretty nice pick. The only pr one of the problems is that Ogre, Magi, and Jakira have a lot of HP. Generally, you want to versus like pretty squishy heroes, but mm -hmm. none of these are. Very it can work squish. nicely against Legion Commander. You know, if she throws yeah. herself into a duel, she could be throwing herself into a pickle against uh, a Mystic Flare. But hey, I mean, there's still option for Leviathan here. They could switch Ogre or Jakira to a core position. I think Ten they've ran Jakira as a core position before, and then pick up someone still like the Skywrath Mage who can Five work side by side remaining. with Legion Commander pretty nicely. Once she gets all that Blink Dagger, she's got great initiation Fighter factor, assassin. but. We're going down this road now. It looks Radiant like we got a PA pick. here, so a fair amount of melee damage. It's a really early melee lineup. It's it's, it's, it's a it's pretty early PA pick. Number seven out of ten. I, I would say usually it comes eight or ten, eight ninth or ten. I mean, she does have the benefit of Ogre's Bloodlust. Uh, with the lineup they have now, let's say they do Ogre Jikiro as the supports, mm -hmm. uh, Legion as the off lane. Now, they could roll PA as a safe laner Ten and still grab something remaining. like a Magnus if they want to get the benefit of a little more team fight that they're Five lacking a bit of remaining. and uh, get the benefit, of course, of Empower onto PA. I wouldn't mind that too much. But then you're Reserve offering time. Rubik a sweet, delicious treat in RPL right there. They need Tidehunter, I'd say. Tidehunter is the pick I would pick for them. For Leviathan? And yeah. switch a Legion Commander out to... Well, they can put or LC like mid, or they can aggro or they try. Can, yeah, aggro try. Yeah, and throw yeah. Tyrant up top. Why it not, always right? depends on what complexity picks. But F Phantom Assassin, pretty good in the mix now that Brew's out of the pool. But generally, you want it versus a carry that you know Life is going to be majority physical, such as Life Stealer. Right? Complexity pick right bad. into it. And you think PA would have a good time going toe to toe with someone like Life Stealer? Life Stealer, Lone Druid. Um, these kind of heroes are the heroes that Phantom Assassin actually excels against. So it's interesting complexity pick up Life Stealer in response to already seeing PA. I mean, I, I have to agree with you a little bit. I mean, she has the benefit of Blur already naturally, and that could prove to be a bit troublesome Five for someone like Life Stealer. Uh, I'm not seeing, I mean, Radiant I see a Bat Rider, so bad. that typical vehicle a lot of people like to say once you see a Life Stealer Dia because team. he needs to get into the heat of the battle. You can't just like watch Phase from the drums, outskirts and like, Yasha, dude. you know, yeah, but then you're like requiring an income of who knows how much just to be able to put those items to strong use. You know, the, he wants the easy ride. He's like, can someone just pick me up my Cadillac and drop me off in the battle? This is not an easy Life Stealer game at all. A life Stealer also got countered by Abaddon. You would just... He was just uh, a Fodic Shield, the open wounds, and then he couldn't stick on the target. And he would just get kited during his rage. And a similar story with Legion Commander with press attack. You just press attack whoever gets open wounded or Batrider lasso. And on top remaining. of that, you have all these other spells to deal with. You have to uh, try not get kited by bloodlusted melee heroes. Reserve time. It's, it's just not a very easy life stealer game. I think also life stealers reserved for one of the latter phases of the pick, 8th, ninth, or 10th, but not particularly good versus Leviathan's lineup right now. And yeah, I mean, you talked about team fight complexity. I actually, lack a decent amount of team fight too. Life stealer, not your best team fight hero, just very good at ganking, especially in tandem with the bat rider. Yeah, I mean, I, I love what they have with the bat rider here. Uh, bat rider in the game always just caused that extra bit of presence. You know, like people say they have the enigma factor with black hole. I think bat rider has something similar, especially around roach time he, as well. He just causes a lot more havoc Ten in general. Like remaining. you can't move efficiently in team fights. You're like stuck. He just sets the pace. Five he jumps in remaining. and everyone's just like, fucking get that guy. Get that guy. He's got our guy. He's going Radiant for a kidnap. But pick. uh look at this. Razor last pick in a ban. I don't know the day I've seen that ever happen where he just kinda slips all the way through and either at this point he would be ignored completely or obviously he'd be picked up or banned. So there's your Razor. This is looking like it's going to be a safe lane setup. Uh, pretty standard. I don't imagine they're going to go aggro with this and just kind of keep Legion in a solo safe lane. I'm thinking what you see is what you get from the side of Leviathan. Is Ten it safe to say that? Remaining. Mm. Or do you think they're going to try to pull the I think they could here? aggro try with Five the Razor if they wanted to. Just because Razor just shuts down Life Stealer so hard. Yeah. And then PA Reserve is fine time. with Bat Rider. You just spam the crap out of your Stifling Dagger. Um... Or you can just put Elsie up there if you get enough charges, you just press the attack. It depends on who, th who their mid is, but I think Leviathan has a high potential to aggro try, but their tendency is not really to aggro try that much, although they do like 5 mini the opponent's jungle. Ooh, Ooh. the core, core Lesh? Yeah, it might be a Swindle Lesh. Yeah, they like the Lesh. It actually got banned out yesterday, 5th pick, and I was like, what? And then I d doted it, and they've run it, I think, twice yeah. this far. I'm remembering 
one game that Swindle definitely ran it. I, I can now, unfortunately, I can't remember the outcome of that game and how they it went. They won but both very handily. Great. So we got we got Leshrac here. He has some a fair amount of setup. You got the lockdown there available early game with your Rubik, and then Batrider offers a lot later into the game so that he can get those easy slitters in. You know, he, he can be kind of in the same sense like a Zeus where he definitely favors getting a lot of levels Prepare on hand, putting him battle. in the core position seems to be to his his benefit. You know, we're not seeing a whole lot of the olden days where you get the tried and true combo of like a Shadow Demon Leshrac too much anymore, but Leshrac needs farm. He, yeah. you waste two of his skills and you can't be in the fray of things, which is Pulse Nova and Diabolic Indic. So mm -hmm. it's very important that you do get farming. And I and you got to be able to live when you go in there. Yes. You can't be like, let's go, boys, and you fire up three of your abilities, and they're like, eh, it's a goat. He needs like, flick them off. Bloodstone ASAP or Ags, one of those two items, just to um, get a lot of HP. Or you can also do the other build, which is like Treads or Phase, and then Drums Yules, which is easy setup for Split Earth. So it depends on whether you want to really concentrate on the stun or just mass magic damage output and I think it's going to be the latter because Leviathan is actually really susceptible to just high magical damage. Um, 30 from, seconds like to Razor's battle. pretty vulnerable, like Fleshrack doesn't care if he gets uh, drained uh, and PA is especially vulnerable so I think it's nice that they picked it. Um, as you said, like Zeus would have worked pretty similarly in this situation. All right, so we'll have to see how it works out here. This is a very uncharacteristic like Stark, I'd have to say, for Leviathan. They're typically a team that really loves to get aggressive right off early. They will move as a five-man hit squad if necessary to just kind of put the that early factor begins. in. And uh, for Dude. complexity, they, they were prepared for it. They were gathered this in their own jungle as well. They easier. had a nice defensive unit right there, but Leviathan didn't want to move whatsoever. This life sealer set is hideous. Let me see this thing. Oh, my God. Oh, it's Moon Meander, and I mean... it. The dongle thing on the head, it's, it's a bit intriguing, but yeah, yeah, I have to say that's... It is probably one of the bottom five sets I've seen on here. There Heroes. it is. So uh, that set is going to quickly decrease in value after someone like Merlini saying oh that. So if you got it, yeah, I'd recommend sell, sell, sell. Anyways, let's go ahead and get underway. I guess we should officially get this one started. This is a big deal, Merlini. This is the Losers Finals, or Lower Bracket Finals, if you want to say it in a nice manner. <laughs> but uh, They did lose. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they, yeah, they were taken down a peg from Not Today. They're looking to bounce back. Winner will move on to face Not Today in those Grand Finals. And uh, we already have a, a lot of footsie play happening early, especially this top mega red. Blood. And, uh, wow, they, they, they go right at it early yeah. bottom lane. It's going to be Moon Meander who does strike first. Your first blood of this match doesn't take, you know, any more than about a minute to go underway and you know, your aggro try lane and try on try kind of setup is pretty hot and heavy. I can't even get the introductions underway before we get started, so I'll just kind of spin out on the fly here. Complexity bottom lane, your first blood is going to be grabbed, of course, by Moon Meander playing your Life Stealer just behind. It's Z Freak. He's going to be playing your Rubik support just behind Bloody Nine, playing your Ancient Apparition. He's already working with that pull. Mid lane, Swindle Melon's playing your Core Lashrak. We're talking about the early farm he's going to need. He's got a Null, some shared Tangos, Limp in that off lane Bat Rider. He's already, uh, you know, three and one. He's got the creeps well by his side, so not too and too bad as he'll be going up against uh, Shredder here on your Leviathan side. You know what? I should probably let you do the intros, right, Merlini? Why don't you go ahead and uh, get a swing at your Leviathan boys? Oh, good old Leviathan. Yeah. All right. We have Jenkins, Pudge Extraordinaire on the Legion Commander, Shredder, PA, Shibby on the mid Razor, Nushim on the support Jakiro, and last but not least, Sunken. With his GG Platinum Baby Roshan on the Ogre. They love their money. They love their cosmetics. Yo, style. Yes, yesterday they didn't have all the styling Such items, though. No Time Breaker. Uh, well, no that was their, that was their problem. No yeah. Dragon Claw. I know. They weren't swagging out. Style is half the game, they say, in Dota. I mean, you got to make sure that not only you'll be able to beat your opponent, but you got to look, do look good doing it. So. So what matters most, Mew Meander, though, on style points, he's, he's a little bit behind. So hopefully his game performance can step it up a bit here on his life stealer. But with the first blood already on hand, I'd imagine he's having pretty much the start of his life. It's not looking like this Leviathan aggro trilane's quite working out to what they expect here. It's They're still getting pressured pretty easily, it looks like, here from early in the <laughs> bottom lane. And uh, Jakiro can kind of only juke and jive with uh, liquid fire here and there. But as you see, as he moves forward, they're already pinging him out. They, they feel pretty confident in this lane. And, they might be able to make another go if the opportunity does arise. Yeah, uh, I think it really did hurt them that they didn't five-man to opponent's jungle early. Mm -hmm. I think they have a better five-man lineup early, even though they have Chilling Touch. Mm -hmm. um, it's still... It's, I think they have like just better heroes for it with like Ogre and Jakiro, PA with her low cooldown cycling dagger. It would have been pretty difficult for them, but it still would have been better for them because they have this Observer Ward on the bottom Brune that's not very useful at all because 
they're not particularly interested in killing the Razor when they can just shut these two heroes down so easily and when AA is not really good at rotating anyways. They already have vision of the room from the top ward, um, so they really need to plan a ward into the opponent's jungle to see what the support is, see whether or not they're pulling or they're zoning, and to block the creep pull. And yeah, maybe it got to him mentally. I mean, it looked like the last couple of games they played when they did do their early movement, it seemed to just not go their way. It would either end up in them handing over like a three for one trade against uh, Complexity the first time, or they wouldn't get much out of it at all. So maybe they're thinking that's they're not going to go for it. They are making a go here on Z3. They start with the Ignite. They're looking at Bull Rush 4. Dual Breath is going to be there. Z3 needs a few more hits, but they might trade one for one here. They do. Nushin goes down. Z3 actually still alive, and they're actually making a go on Jenkins. This lane continues to go worse for Leviathan as they're trying to retreat out he's gonna go down here one more right click and he's gonna be moon meander he is so he does pick it up he's getting so much they have phase orb of venom sticky oh. napalm and uh icy vortex slow. for slow yeah it's, it's just way too much slow and you can't really uh effectively purge it off with Radiant's pressing attack because they're gonna just attack. find next attack icy vortex is an aura and yeah they're just they're just done for in this bottom lane i'd say they just uh have one hero Soak up experience and looks like uh, Sunken's actually going to die too. Swim along with that two levels of Edict. Yeah, he's got nowhere to go here. There's already three stacks. One more right click. It's going to be Swindle who does grab the kill on his Lashrek. This is a dream start right now for game number one. With the complexity getting so much out of this bottom. What was supposed to be somewhat of a aggressive tri lane now turned into a dual lane that Leviathan have put together. Moon Meander's getting so much to the point that he's having to be here by himself for now. I mean, he's about to be level six and then it's going to be even that much harder to try to get. PA cannot. Him cannot carry this at, at, at this rate. rate yeah that this is going and like, she needs a lot more to be able to really make an impact life sealer does not need as much and uh mm -hmm. especially with this much of an early snowball he can even get more greedy with his itemization and just look to just make a big impact and try and maybe even add pressure on shredder himself before he can even get those items together so We'll have to see. Swindle benefits a lot from that pick off there in the bottom river, and now he can assert his dominance, uh, dominance rather against Razor in the mid lane. This is a lot of early momentum here for Complexity, and really Leviathan are only getting a little bit out of the top lane. Yeah, it's... Well, looks like uh, we're about to die again. Chibi, this is where they want to go next. They have three here. Kelvin needs to pull Chibi back. He's going to try to run the other way and maybe do some sort of juke pattern, but there's more of that slow building up right here, and there's really nowhere he can go. And he quickly gets taken apart. It's going to be Z3 who does pick up that kill. Complexity looking dang sharp in this one. Looks like they had a quite the breakfast. 5-0. and oh. uh, Leviathan still trying to find their way. They would love to be able to get themselves at least on the board. So just to have a little bit of momentum. But They're also just not prepared for the damage output from Chilling Touch, which is why AA is just so strong in the just so strong yeah, early. Okay. Um, it's really good, especially with heroes like Razor. And it's just so funny how this hero typically just like flips the script as the game goes on. And at first you want to be in the mix and you want to be able to make sure you get the Chilling Touch out there. But then as you get your ultimate and then you get your Agnums, he's like, I'll just be far. No problem, guys. Here, here's here's my snowball. Top and he tower makes such a huge attack. contribution even by that aspect. It's, so interesting to see, and it makes mo a lot more sense why more and more teams are grabbing a hold of them nice and early. So, Ancient Operation already doing big things for this game, adding a lot to the slow factor for complexity and life. And man, they're on a bit of a smoke bit of a from Z there. freaking bloody nine. Probably want to kill Razor again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <clears throat> well. They did draft a really greedy lineup, which is a little bit atypical of Leviathan, actually. They mm. usually only draft two heroes that require a lot of farm this game is three with PALC and Razor. Mm -hmm. And none of them can really help out the other lanes that much unless Razor gets a good rune. But Razor can't even really leave his lane or even just stay in his lane just because of the threat of AA plus Ruby ganking. And on top of that, Batrider is going to have his Blink Dagger fairly soon. And they're not going to be able to respond appropriately if Legion Commander doesn't have any items. Like, she can just get last one and then they're pretty much done for. Um, e even in a 5 on 5, and if anyone's split pushing, they're also going to die too. So things aren't looking very good for them. On top of that, they have an additional push from um, from the Diabolic Edict mm -hmm. if they do get a kill on this Razor in mid. And yeah. they kind of just need to turn one of the games around. I think with PhD and Ogre just sitting behind either Shibi or the Legion Commander bottom, most likely Shibi because I think it's more important that yeah. um, he continues his decent start. I'd say it's not a great start, but it's better than LC's. You know, it. From their perspective, maybe they're just going to be like, well, we got to hope Legion Commander, who just reaches level 5 now, maybe we can get her to level 6. Yeah, they're not contesting any runes at all. Uh, like, they can contest this right now, but they're way too scared to do so. Yeah, there's just... Like, Razor's a big bully when he's uh, outside in a lane like that, but I have a Storm versus Diabolic Edict. He doesn't actually have Eye of Storm, but once he keeps getting these runes, like, he has Radiance's Ace rune, he has Ava's rune. Like, they can just... 
have their way around Even the map. Blade Nine is just denying out the bounty room bottom lane. Razor's like, come on, guys, really? Just nothing for me? And now Shibby has to walk back. He has an empty bottle now on his Razor, and it's flustering. It's very flustering. You could, you could just taste the impact from here. And, uh, well, as he kind of just staggers himself back to lane, Swindle has moved himself up to the top lane for now, just kind of taking a bit of that solo experience. But I agree with what you have to say. When they find the pickoffs, they have great follow-through to kind of get what objectives he done. And he has 1-2-2. Two, two. I wonder where he puts his last two points in. Oh, they have an is thinking about it here. Level 7 wants to see what it could be. If he gets a nice isolation play, Edict would be nice. Now he levels up the ultimate. And he he's goes right for the Edict. So he's got himself? three. He just barely showed himself. Ooh, right around that sentry. Yeah. Played it nicely. Ooh, fakes out once the split earth. No, he's not going to make the commit on anything. And the Billy Goat Man is just going to kind of park himself up here for now. Before he makes a go and... You know, it could be till the, we have the duel online that we might see Leviathan maybe. Swindle gets go. gone on. Oh, well, here we go. They, they see him, and now they decide to make the go here. But the rotation comes through from Z Freak. Swindle fires right back. He's very low on life, however, but it's enough to actually scare Shredder all the way back to his tower. Sunken also goes the lower road here. But Z Freak is persistent. They now have Limp. Dyer's no Blink Dagger getting your Batrider, but 1500 gold. Here comes Nushim. So now it's going to be a three on three here. Limp pulls out the Firefly, but second guessing his commitment to going towards that tower, and it looks like they'll just take the farm on the way out, so... Close. Close to a potential engagement, but both sides kind of playing it more timid here in the top lane. Yeah, maybe just need a couple more crits to make that kill happen. And looks like Leviathan have decent wards up now, one on the top lane to protect PA, one on the mid lane to protect the Razor, and I think it's, just, it's the right decision to just leave the LC out to uh, just get experience. She's actually getting really good farm with her Soul Ring, closing in on Blink Tagger halfway there. Yeah, you know, kind of just scrap what you can from the laning situation, you know, complexity, feel like they have a good thing going, and, you know, they were trying to find a little bit more to kind of build on top of that, but, you know, it proved to be not as easy there in the top lane, so their role has been slowed a little bit for now, as uh, they're going to allow Zephyr to get a little bit in the mid lane, I'd imagine he's very close to his level Radiant 6 on this Rubik, and then, uh, fortified. Can grab some big things, I mean, Ice Path, for example, on your Rubik, instant cast animation, can be a, a huge, huge grab for them, and... At Radiant's that moment, Leviathan grabs the first fallen. structure. Top lane is going to be the tier 1 takedown. It is Nushim who does get the last hit on it, so your Jakiro building up a little bit more. And uh, Shredder, who we felt like more and more eggs are being built up in the PA basket, trying to throw together something to be a counter back to Moon Meander's lifestealer in the late game. And it looks like Moon is going to be going down the armlet road. He's got the helm already here. Pretty good. Oh, he's going to be hitting pretty hard here. He's still dancing here with... LC. I still think the phase drums is slightly Not better fun. just because he does have the dagger a lot, but Blink Dagger shown off. Nice and shiny. That's what you want to do, that's a quota. I mean once you get your Batrider Blink Dagger, you get a smoke, you get someone to get a smoke. I believe Bloody Nine got it for him this time. And you make strong use of that initial Blink Dagger before your opponent even knows you got one. And when you do get that kill, that's just kind of expected and I would say that if you don't get a kill, then you kind of you, you messed up. It's not on the uh, enemy just to try to avoid something like that. It's almost at the point where sometimes it's unavoidable. I'd have to Dyer's say. Bottom tower Jink is actually is going to one three one build. Pretty unusual for LC. Usually we'll see uh, maxing that passive attack and that defensive posture. But still, I think even then you go for one bottom tower is get under get attack. Or creeps in lane and get more uh, levels up. But I think the way it seems like the way they're playing them right now is like an Abaddon. Oh yeah, I've seen that. I think it was like one of the first games I casted since the real patch turnaround that brought LC in. One of the C teams ran her as like an Amazon, like a position four, just being in lane, and all she did was kind of purge off and heal. <laughs> like Why would pick Abaddon then? Yeah, I mean, yeah, <laughs> maybe. I guess they just got so excited about the new patch that uh. they wanted to make sure they put LC to use somewhere, and that was during that whole trial period where you see LC in the mid lane, played in the hands of someone like Hani, and then... People were getting a hold of him in the offlane. I even saw Phonic play her straight in the jungle in one game. It seemed like teams were kind of curious to try to put her in their arsenal and finding the right, you know, place to put her. And uh, as the chips do get settled, uh, it looks like Leviathan trying to make strong use of her here in the game number one, this best of three. The loser will be eliminated from the summit two, and their tournament road will come to an end. The winner is one step closer to coming here to LA. Hanging out the Summit House and battling towards that 280,000 plus dollars of a cash prize pool. Dyer's now online here from Blade Knight. He's still right behind that tower. It looks like they're going to go for the structure one takedown. Your glyph's going to be popped, but ultimately, I don't think Leviathan are going to be able to put up much of defense. Maybe a last minute Ice Path deny, though. If possible from Nushan. Too risky with Batrider. Yeah, Batrider's yeah, last a GG. 
Zoning Mac or Pyro though. Gotta get those creeps burned Dyer's immediately. Bottom tower is under attack. smoke barbecue. No. Dyer's bottom tower they do has pull back. Fallen. They play the safe route. That's the route. That's the better route. Yeah, so they just pull up the rest of the creeps and then pull back. So a slow siege forward still continues here. From complexity on the other side, your Shredder PA continues to farm up. Z Freak getting a bit from the sidelines. You can see it's going to be something caught out immediately. The lasso is going to be used from Limp, but it's Moon Meander who right clicks and takes him down and picks up another big kill. That's already three Radiant's kills now tower on the Moon Meander Lifestealer who had been more so farming. He's got the armlet now complete and near 1800 gold. My oh my, 6300 net worth. He's well and up there right now. and. For a hero who you imagine is not going to have a better time going toe-to-toe -to -toe with PA, he's off to a pretty good start, I'd have to say. Yeah, PA has Vlads. They can try and sneak in a Roche, I'd say. That's the best way for them to recover, aside from getting the Blink Dagger on LC and then getting some quick duels, but they don't have that much burst. They don't have, like, a Skyrath in their team. Like, Razor's, like, decent, he's decent, but yeah. they're not amazing at uh, swiping some dual kills, especially when you have like a really farm left leg in the game who matches a bit booster, a life sealer with armlet, and a ton of cooldowns to play with, so I don't know, it's going to be very difficult for Obiathan. I've seen them in this position before, and they don't really lose their composure um, once they give up a few kills. Oh, here we go, LC with that new blink Radiant's actually middle conveniently tower uses is under to just attack. skip hop right over the top of Moon Meander's head and make a Clean little getaway. Would have been a much more of a sticky situation if she didn't have that convenient blink, but oh, very, this is very important for them too. They dewarded this uh, high ground ward. That's super important for them because they just need to make complexity go into very dangerous games. Like if LC is sitting behind uh, a tar la lasso target and he purges up open wounds and the lasso, mm -hmm. they can potentially get two kills, duel on life stealer and just yeah. blow up the Limp's flying here. He's thinking about going for a lasso, but like you said, LC gets the grab on him. Which uh, he actually uses it on himself, so Nishram is going to be fully grabbed right there. Jumps on four, goes for Blade Nine with that duel. He's going to get the duel victory and a little bit of bonus damage, but it doesn't stop there. It's going to be Swindle Melons who gets the double kill on the return. The duel was taken from Rubik, and they immediately use it back. Very nicely grabbed right there from Z Freak, I'd have to say. And they get a two for one special. Jump forward, Limp wants to get all the sunken as well. This Ogre with no mana gets brought right back very nicely with the flame break. Telkinese is up. Zip, zap. And now they make it three. Oh, Complexity, huge fight for them in this mid lane. Now they're pressing forward. Dyer's they're going to go for the tier one as well. This is going to advance their already lead quite significantly. Ten to one, Malini. I'm oh, not exactly so sure why he's pressed attack on himself. He's supposed to save him. It was at the exact Dyer's moment that the Batrider made a jump in. I don't fallen. know if he was planning on making a jump in himself and be the one to lead things off in the fight, but he was just a hair too late if that was the case because Batrider was already well underway. So who actually does LC attack if she gets dueled while dueling someone else? If she gets dueled while dueling someone else. Which is what happened. She was dueling AA and then... It looked like a hot mess of a fight club to me. It was yeah. hard to see who was fighting who. I, just I wonder which one takes priority. Spit was everywhere, blood was on the ground. So yes, what's going wrong for them? Well, firstly, they they didn't sweep the opponent's jungle. They didn't get the ward down. They didn't keep eyes on the supports, which led their two offenders to have a disastrous time on bottom. Mm -hmm. PA hasn't been involved in any fights. PA is not your 100% like late game ownage six slot hero. And I think yeah. some of the teams or some people have that misconception about the hero just because she has evasion and crit. Um, but she's actually not that great at late game just because MKB just completely attack. ruined Blur. Radiance um, middle tower is under attack. And she needs to be able to keep the opponent Radiance down. Structures are fortified. Um, you can't have a free fight like this or Lysa is going to be able to use um, So she's 0, zero, zero right Dyer's now. She needs to get involved at some point. Like, Radiance middle yeah, tower has been denied. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Yeah, there's not that many kill opportunities to be had, but at the very least you can counter a game game. top tower has fallen. Maybe get some lucky crits for them to uh, get some more kills. Um, but like as of right now, she's just like free farming if if they really wanted a late gamer like this they could just pick you know anti mage naga siren naga siren is really good just yeah medusa something medusa yeah all these heroes are much better at the way that shredder is actually playing it right now and then he sees this like oh, three-man crew just, just like flirts with yeah. that yeah look how easily shredder gets punished just like <laughs> dagger and they're like where the hell did that dagger come from and they just go beat the hell out of shredder now they're going for Jenkins, who tries to go in one at a time now. Leviathan lose another two. It's looking like a pretty quick game one, to be honest yeah, with you here. 12 for one. Everyone's just too far. Look how quickly they get punished. That was This all started from a dagger that was just casually thrown out from Shredder. Like, he can get a quick lick in on either a hero or maybe a last grab of a creep. But 
the, the gap closing capability already from complexity is just so nice and quick. I mean, Z Freak has a blink dagger on Rubik, puts it to grade A work right there, just jumps yeah. on in, gets the telekinesis, Batrider follows it up, and there's just nothing they can do. There was just way too much farm on all the heroes. Swindle Melons already has the Atos. Their Batrider had like a 10 minute blink, now he has 4 step to Z Freak has blink dagger. They just got way too much gold. They can't stop the pushes because Diabolic Edict is way too strong, especially mm -hmm. when they have two fairly weak melee heroes. Um, and, I mean, the Razor pick is nice, but they didn't pair the Razor versus the Life Stealer. They didn't get involved with PA, even though she's supposed to get involved early. They didn't have a successful offlane at all. They didn't commit enough heroes down there. And I think it's a little bit of poor draft, but also just poor strategy. They could have just drafted an Els or an Abaddon who's less farm dependent, who could have just sat behind THD, who's a slightly better offlaner in this particular scenario. And, you know, maybe drafted like a split pusher instead of PA. He can like scout with illusions instead of throwing daggers out and just dying. Yeah. Um, and they just don't have a good comeback mechanic. Like, how are you going to get dual kills? You have one kill on your team. Seeing, uh, our first real bomb right now. We're limping. The bat bomb right here. He's got the package. Oh, they used the one earlier on the near their own secret shop. Oh, they did? Oh. Yeah. The ogre. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, on the ogre on the side. They also used the one on top for the PA. But, I mean, it's like. It, to be honest, it probably doesn't even matter that Moon Meander's in there. Yeah. Just because they have so much damage output already. Man, they just, just kind of use it to scout out the Dude, has a veil, area. man. Ancient, but uh, it's getting pretty good here, and it's going to continue to get better as Limp is going to grab a gem now on this Bat Rider. So they're going to take full map control and the ward situation that Leviathan had out there to kind of supply a little bit of that net, that safety net as far as where it's safe to farm and not to farm. That net's going to be taken away promptly here from the side of complexity and then you're going to see Leviathan get suffocated. I mean what farm they can actually have access to they're going to have to prioritize on their PA everyone else they're going to be left to dry and left to starve and uh, unfortunately they might just have to suffer and hope for the best here and, and maybe a rubber band kind of a situation as I don't think complexity are going to be losing a lot of momentum here they've got some nice wards down they're going to scout out the area see if there's any wards on the side of complexity there's not so they might be able to just segue perfectly into going for a roche and i'd imagine leviathan don't have even much of a team fight to counter counter you know to counter it back too much i mean they have thd with uh you know a nice mac at a choke point can kind of add a little bit but i just think it'd be too scary they need mass bk bizzles man they need like three of them Lushrak just puts out way too much damage. She has Veil now, yeah. so we're talking about like all these heroes just dying in like two or three seconds. Ooh, though they got a nice pulse. smoke here. They could cut off Swindle. Oh, uh, they're going to be scouted out. Swindle already heads immediately up to the north to get away. Blinking forward, scout Swindle's like, I might have to man fight this one. And he's actually winning! He easily blows up LC in that duel. It was just a little too close. And Look at this, Complexity are just going to get the best of this engagement as well. A double kill for Swindle! Can he get the triple? No, nope, but Z-Freak is going to clean it on up. Your Rubik is even on a killing spree. 16 to 1. That looked like it could have been a great gank there for Leviathan, but somehow Merlini, they still lose 3 and get no 1. Well, they don't have any damage. LC, or the Electric has 13 armor. Which is a little ridiculous for a last rack. And the veil should not be underestimated in terms of survivability, and as well as the damage output. Gets manhandled so quick that her team can't get close enough to kind of help with the damage Dyer's output top tower before is she under even goes attack. down. It's that just goes to show Dyer's how far ahead complexity are at this point. Last rack's are actually a very interesting concept in terms of trying to counter an LC. You just cast Edict and Pulse Nova and then you're like, whatever, if you want to kill me, you'll just die. Dyer's top until tower she gets has BKB fallen. Or something, but, but even yeah. BKB, like, Edict does a lot of damage to BKB. And it's not going to be a quick grab. I mean, you still have to get that Blink Dagger as well, so LC will be investing a lot of time in farm by that point. Well, Shrek could have something himself to work with to kind of... Yeah, Ghost Scepter. Yeah, Ghost Scepter, Yules, something Bloodstone. that would make it pretty hard. So yeah. even yeah. if you're not targeting that Lashrek, he'll have something Dyer's by that point to make your life a living hell. So, you know, I, I like the idea as well for Lashrek being a good counter to someone like an LC who just loves their singled out engagements. And that was a really good idea. Like, PA has a BKB yeah. now, so it has to be in there to be able to get her damage out. And Gotta get it. If you're there. going for a first grab BKB before you go damage, when you, by the time you have the damage together, your BKB is going to be withered down to a measly like five seconds, and she's going to be eating the full wrath. So Yellow smoke. Here we go. This could be an early all or nothing kind of a play to kind of don't pick for up some the bounty. Man. Yeah, if you pick it up, you lose your smoke. Then I don't think they're going to be like that. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, the back end's going to get popped right here. Z freak did he scout it out from that cliffside? Oh, they put down an aggressive ward. 
Ice Path's gonna fly through here. Might see Jakiro. They're all popped now, but they're still getting no one here. It might be Complexity, though, who rotate on through and pull out an ambush. Abort, abort! Oh, they gotta get the hell out of here. Okay, guys, we've gone too far. They're retreating. Oh, go, go, go! <laughs> Complexity's like, what the hell are you doing? Get back here! They grab Shredder, pull him all the way back. He pulls out his BKB as a desperate effort to just blink back to his friends. Friends, please help me! Shredder! He's gonna get manhandled. Moon Viander goes on in. Right clicks are there. Shredder, one more blink. Two seconds, Dyer's one second. You gotta be able to go for his juke. Go forward, no! The flame break's gonna be there at the end, and your Shredder goes down. Jenkins now, look at the slow! Crawling like molasses trying to get away from this one, but you cannot escape the wrath of complexity here. Moon Meander, mega kill streak for him. Only one, one death on the side of complexity. It just continues to be struggling here for Leviathan. This is like the third smoke slash gank attempt that just has gone horribly wrong. Complexity show that you are not welcome on our side of the map. Dyer's middle tower has fallen. Very demoralizing for Leviathan at this point. Like they, nothing that they're doing is working out. Smoke gangs, they get do, they get to jump on left track. They still die. They smoke in front of jungle. They all get wrecked. They have their BKB on PA. Yet she still dies. Like nothing is working out. So, I mean, at this point, it's just a matter of can Complexity just play safe and sound enough Dota to uh, enter high ground and. Mm -hmm. To be honest, it's well, just that's that's one of complexities like downfalls. bread and butters. I, I would say is playing it safe. I, I don't oh, yeah, know. I've yeah. seen many games where like they will just torture almost their enemy, getting up to a 40k gold lead, and then they're like, "Okay, gentlemen, let's end it." And they kind of just move in as a five-man group and get the job done. But on the same uh, side of the coin, I've I've also seen complexity hand away situations where it seemed like they were well in the head. So in this kind of game, though, I think it's just. It's pretty dominant. We're pushing past 15k as far as net worth. Dyer's Your supports are starting to get big things attack. out of this. Bloody Nine, I was going to say, is very only one component away from his axe, but he actually just throws together a four staff. So, your AA, it's got that little bit of extra mobility. And, uh, Dyer's bottom tower help out is under attack. LC, so. Bloody Nine looking to get in on the action. Limp has got Moon Meander all packaged up. They're going to go for a D ward here, taking away that vision from the secret shop of Leviathan. and. They continue to swim around the outside like sharks Dyer's in water as they take down the tier fallen. 2 in the bottom. All outer towers now gone from Leviathan. And it's going to be complex. You're going to look to kind of sheep herd Leviathan back into their base and away from all their farm potential. Sharks versus sheep. That's pretty much how it feels, man. Sharks versus sheep. I, I don't know when a shark really ever had the delicacy of eating a sheep. It's not like sheep's going to your water very often, Merlini. But sea sheep, I guess. <laughs> 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 the sea lions. Leviathan here on the low water. Oh no! The sharks! They grabbed me! They pulled them up into the deep end of the water and they just <laughs> bite and rip apart. And we'll see that on the Discovery Channel, I'm sure, Merlini. Yeah, that's, I think it's uh, that was just not, a chomp. not safe to show on TV, man. Ugh. Yeah, that one might be cut in the uh, editing room. Poor Jenkins does not survive and I mean, I don't know who was with him, but that was just... That was, that was devastating as Leviathan continued just to swerve near their fresh school of fish <laughs> don't want to go too far away from their buddy buddy system here as uh i'm, I'm, I'm i am surprised complexity they don't want to go for roche is there really that much of a threat from leviathan that maybe they Absolutely can go for a strong not. roach contention what is it now is it just being the dire advantage that they kind of can always have that you know unknown factor of making a jump in from a side over here or i mean they're going for it now so i guess we're going to test that theory Moon Meander considers tickling with Roche, but man, second guesses it, so maybe they got your memo. <laughs> they could easily do Roche. They're just playing it that safe, huh? They don't have a ward on the high ground, which is a little bit where uh, they should be a little bit wary of, but at the same time, like, Leviathan have terrible Roche fighting heroes. They have no BKB on Razor, so yeah, he has an Ag, but he's still just going to get wrecked. Yeah. So I don't really think it, they should not be scared at all of Roche. Well, now they get, they're going to commit for it. Roche down now to Half-Life. They will have the extra life on their side and maybe that's enough for them to kind of start going for the high ground here and so you have to start thinking about leviathan how good is their high ground defense they do have jakiro who i'd have to say is one of the better supports as far as offering a good wave clearing and slowing potential push engagements with macro pyre but Roshan that's only for the benefit of maybe one wave so but i mean batrider is one of the better brace baking heroes though that's true that's taking true. the fight downhill and, uh, limp has been on his mark this game i'd have to say as far as being that initiator 
I'm not really sure why Moon Maner didn't go for MKB. Like, their only real threat is PA, because she has BKB. Yeah. And I, I, I wouldn't even yeah. say she's the real threat, she's just like a very minor threat at that. And then Razor will just fall to the AUE, I would say. Like, if he gets AA blasted, he's just done for. Um, and on top of that, he's just going to get kited with Icy Vortex and, you know, Napalm, the things that we have been looking at. Even the Lightning Storm is pretty significantly slow yeah. at this point. Uh, maybe they want to wait for, like, a Bloodstone Ooh. on Leshrac. He'll have that. Yeah, they got the Soul soon. Booster now. He just put near 4k towards it. I think it would have been better to give it to Moon Meander, though, the Aegis, just because he's far more likely to die, I'd say, just because Leshrac has actually a lot more survivability than Lifesteal. Even though yeah. Lifestealer has Rage, uh, Leshrac has more HP, significantly more HP. They might just kind of like throw Swindle in there first, like a Trojan horse. He's like, go in there, and he's just going to cast everything he can to kill what he can, and it's going to force the Bison to go, okay, get rid of that thing. And they'll just be forced to, you know, put out a lot of those skills on his first life. I don't know if it's more like a Trojan horse. Trojan horse is like, oh, you know, you, factor. Like, maybe you look all sweet and I stuff. I guess that would be more like if Nakes was to, li like, infest a creep. He's like, go in there, creep. <laughs> it's like a scouting yes. bomb, and they're dropping a... <laughs> Dropping another bomb yes, right after. Yes, you're a Leviathan friend. Go in there, please. <laughs> and then they just kind of make the jump. Uh, you know, I wouldn't be surprised they pull out something at this point. I mean, just look. Leviathan. They're just trapped. I think they should make a push at the tail end. Like, like three minutes. Uh, three minutes. Like the final stretch. In, that like last one, sprint. Yeah, one minute from now, probably. It's pretty safe to do over right. two minutes left on ages. We got the package here. The UPS man, Limp. He's considering which door to go knocking at here. <laughs> We'll be putting up a tag. Ma'am, got a package for you here. A special Moon Meander treat. We're looking to come inside. Decline. Do not us. Decline package. <laughs> it's like, I will leave a note, but I'll be back tomorrow if necessary. If you're not going to allow us to come knocking. But look how much time Leviathan are just stuck on defensive duty. All lanes now pushed into the base. And this is that period of time where Complexity are like, we'll be just continuing to take the farm from the outside. You're only working with the creeps coming into your base. We have already those same creeps in exchange, plus your your side of the base to work with. You can take away the farm in your jungle, and we're going to be constantly getting the better of this. And there's really nowhere that Leviathan can find a lot of side push. I mean, Shredder's desperately looking for it. He's on his own expedition in the complexity forest woods, you know, finding his own farm there. But he's the only one outsourcing. What's he going to get? Like a same? A basher? That's not going to change anything. But... Round two, Glyph Dyer's not up, Swindle pops attack. Edict number two. Boom, boom, boom. And this tower is dead. Ice pass there. But still, they can't stop. Going forward like, like a siege unit. Dyer's middle Getting it done. Has Aegis fallen. in hand. Not too much threat. Shredder still farming on the side. Not really creep cutting. Not really doing much. Just waiting Dyer's until it's absolutely necessary attack. to get involved with anything. Limp holding Moon, just circling, waiting for maybe somewhere to jump in. He might need to go on the LC, otherwise he could get quickly perched off any sort of lasso. So. He needs a smoke. He's like doing it in full vision, and it's a little bit easier for him. Yeah, his firefly ship is going down here. It's, you know, Leviathan keeping a lot of distance here. Their uh, rack slowly getting seated down here. Swindle's happy to just kind of plant himself here and continue to use Edict after Edict. He gets it, there's the jump in. They do go for Jenkins. They pull him all the way back with that four staff. And I think that's the best situation as a bat rider you can go for. They jump on through and there's that base breaking bat rider in uh, full force. And now they step back. Shredder trying to get something done on the back end with his BKB, but that BKB ends. And maybe Z Freak trying to get the last hit in. He does make his way out. Shredder, no. Flip to four flame break. Boom. Got him. Lint gets it done, killing spree for him. Meanwhile, Swindle Melon continues to clean up. They do get a hold of that pesky Batrider. New Shim, though, now going to be focused here. It's the punch strike there on Team Freak allows him to jump back. But Swindle, double kill. Moon Meander going to clean up the other, and it looks like this is going to be the beginning of the end. There's the end. Tal has been thrown in Merlini. Leviathan had enough in game number one. I'd have to say uh, Complexity was a, it was a pretty good stop. Dyer's Radiant yeah, worth. Victory. 22 0. Never forget. 22 0. Never forget. I mean, what what's there to say? I mean, was it just hey, Leviathan just got out? They didn't draft enough team fight, okay. which is what they're good at. They didn't mm -hmm. play their restraints and poor strategy, and that's about it. Yeah, yeah. Do you, do you have to think that Complex just kind of played the game they were handed, or did they play like a stellar game? It was just kind of they played very well. It was for the the easy pickings at this one. It was a little bit different than yesterday, where yesterday they were like kind of looked like they were not slightly lost, but they just mm -hmm. misfired on a couple of a. Uh, Key, key moments in the game. This one was just really easy for them yeah. to execute cleanly, I'd say. I would have to say, though, also, though, on the same 
thing is uh, Leviathan. I guess when I'm playing Devil's Advocate, I don't think they really look like themselves in that game either. I mean, yeah. they like to play more spicy. You know, they get their trolls, they get their pudges, they go with their five man the hit sniper. squads. Yeah, snipers. They like just to do something to keep their opponents thinking, and I think that was a little too vanilla from them. I want chocolate. I want Rocky Road. <laughs> what ice cream do you like, Marlene? Cookies and cream. All right. Well, we want some cookies and cream. So yes. we'll be back with that, uh, hopefully, in game number two here. But it's going to be match point for Complex. They win this one, and they will get a chance at redemption going against Not Today in the finals for Leviathan. They are fighting for their tournament life. We'll be back with that game in just a moment, folks. Please stick around.